something that you can embrace and something that is all about you. Um, again, my name is Nate Scott, author of the book Life is Rich, How to Create Lasting Wealth. I want you to know if you look at the color schemes, some of the books should have come around just so you can have it at your table so that in turn you can kind of flip through it. I don't think I need the mic, though. No, no. All right. Cool. And uh, Life is Rich, How to Create Lasting Wealth is a biblically-based leadership program focused on personal growth and entrepreneurship. Okay, it's based on personal growth and entrepreneurship. Because in 1996, the week I graduated from West Point, I got introduced to the world of personal growth and development and entrepreneurship via network marketing. Now, unlike most people, for me, I've never been drawn into an opportunity because of the opportunity. Again, I just graduated from West Point. Degrees in computer science, engineering, and sociology. I was going into the service. I had a plan already in place. So they couldn't wow me about the financial opportunity and how much money could possibly be made. But what really was impactful for me was that I never knew about picking up books and going to seminars and being around successful people. And that exposure for me laid the foundation for me to make my first million by 32. As I speak around the world, I tell people, take away my West Point degree, take away my MBA from George Washington University, take away my, my background in financial planning from Georgetown University, taking away all those things, when I learned to pick up books and go to seminars and be around successful people, that's what really laid the foundation for everything else I've done in my life. Mm -hmm. I want you to really understand that. By a show of hands, how many of you do not have a college degree? Turn around. All right. Brenda, I hear you. <laughs> okay, hands down. Hands down. See, I'm uniquely qualified to speak about this in this particular manner. Because I think you would agree, you probably know and probably have heard of, and if you haven't, you can always Google it. You probably have heard of West Point. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a pretty good school. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so given that, you know, it's so many times you have people that are speak before you that are talk to you about things, and, and we as parents, we'll raise our children, and oftentimes we're raised in this way about going to school, right, in order to get a good job, right? So I'm uniquely qualified to speak about it from a from a vantage point of saying, hey, here's what I do have, which you can't take away. But frankly, my body will have nothing to do with you, does it? Nope. I mean, really and truly, what do you really care about? those things, those accolades, as it relates to you. I want you to make a mental note of that. Because I'm going to give you some information that's going to be about shifting your mindset and maybe being completely contradictory to everything that you've learned in all these years with Mary Kay. And, and if it's not just this company, it can be any company. You see, my background and my bio has nothing to do with you. It's equivalent to the same thing of the edification process of saying that someone is such and such title without actually having a person be met right here in the heart. So my promise to you today, taking away all that stuff from my background, is this. If you lend me your ear, I'll give you my heart. Okay? What's your name? Cleta. 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 Okay. Cleta you Cheetah. Your, Cleta Cheetah. Cleta Cheetah. Cheetah? Like the Cheetah. Like the Cheetah. I'm fast like the Cheetah. Yeah? Let's do a wrap. <laughs> What's your name? April. April. Mm -hmm. My birthday is in April. Yeah. Tina, nice, to meet, nice to meet you. If you give me your ear, I'll give you my heart. <laughs> if you give me your ear, I'll give you my heart. You know, we hear the thing of saying that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? Okay. What I'm going to share with you is seven questions in seven minutes to reveal a seven-figure cash flow danger. Seven questions in seven minutes to reveal a seven-figure cash flow danger. And all I want you to do is on your paper right now, write down one through seven. One through seven. One through seven. Don't worry about writing down questions. I just want you to answer. I want you to be fully present and engaged as I take you through this exercise. And I want you to realize I'm doing this because it's all about you. You see, I don't sell stuff. I don't sell stuff. 
That's why I was able to say here, take this what you read it. And what I actually said to her, I said, hey, take this book, read it, and if you find any value in it, you can pay for it later. <laughs> That's what I said to you. I didn't hear that. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, we hear, we selected the hearing, right? I understand, I understand. So I'm sharing with you seven questions in seven minutes to reveal the seven fear of cash flow danger. Because wouldn't you agree, if you were to tell me, Nate, I'm in Florida right now and I'm getting ready to drive to New York, and you told me that that's where you're going, if I notice that your vehicle you were in Jacksonville, but you were headed towards Miami. Would you want me to tell you sooner or later that you were never going to get to New York? Absolutely. <laughs> sooner, right? Okay. Well, that's the same thing about this seven questions and seven minutes to reveal some cash flow danger, because I'm telling you that many, most people are working saying that they're trying to get to New York. Yet they have no idea about the distance it's going to take to get there. They don't know how much gas they need to have in their gas tank. They don't even know the GPS. They don't even know the orientation or the direction in which they're supposed to be traveling. I'm just simply trying to make people aware. So what I do is my process is, and the process that I'm instilling in uh, supporting the Newman area is that I want to help them to gather information, which. The process of which I'm taking you through right now is going to be about gathering information, but I'm not going to, you're not going to give me your stuff. You're not going to tell me your numbers. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not going to invade you. I no longer wear the hat of a financial advisor. I no longer do transactions. I don't do any of that stuff because I process all the different behavioral roadblocks. So you're going to be transparent with yourself. So step one is I'm going to gather information. Step two. I'm going to provide an education, and this is where I'm going to need you all to be open and honest and communicate with me, okay? I need you to play full out. Will you do that for me? Yes. I need you to play full out. This is about you. If I tell you, you forget. If I teach you, you'll remember. Mm -hmm. But if I involve you, you'll learn. I want you to learn. I'm not a, I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm an inspirational teacher. Big difference. So, number one, number one, write down your age. Write down your age. Number two, and again, all you're doing is writing down answers. This is going to be quick. Write down the answers. Write down the answers. Write down the answers. Number one, number one, write down your age. Number two, write down the age at which you would want to retire, whatever that may mean to you. This is a number again. Everything's going to be numbers until I tell you about a percentage. Number two, write down the age at which you would want to retire, whatever that may mean to you. Number three, how long do you have? What's the difference between those two numbers? How long do you have to get there? How long do you have to get there? Now those first two numbers, now yeah, the first number is Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. The second number is New York. The distance between the two is the mileage in which you gotta travel. It's gonna determine what vehicle you're in, right? Now what's interesting about that, about choosing the vehicle, here's what people oftentimes do. Imagine you're on 95 traveling towards New York, you run to bump over the bump traffic. You come to a standstill. And all of a sudden, you see someone riding by in a, on a bicycle. Yeah. Ching, ching. And they're pedaling and going through in and out. And you're getting frustrated because you're standing still. And you're thinking, they're moving. Yeah. So you decide that you're going to get out of your vehicle and that you're going to sell your car and you're going to go grab a bicycle and then you're going to go follow that person because you're thinking they're really moving. You can do that. I'm not going to say you're right or wrong, but it's just probably not something that I would recommend. Well, see, that's what happens every day in this world of finances, be it investing, be it opportunities. You've got a vehicle that can get you to where you want to get to, but because it's not going like you wanted to go, you jump out and you think the shiny object is what you want to go after. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Number four. Number four. 
what is your current asset value? What do you have right now in your retirement? What do you have in that 401k plan? What do you have in your investment account? Do you have a house that you're planning to sell? What do you have that is going to, that is in your gas tank right now? Now, here's the deal. This is a safe zone. You're in a safe zone. That's one of the things I want you to understand. My heart is for women. I, the way I teach is meant to help you to actually open up and be transparent and get real with yourself. Because so many times what happens is women go through life circumstances that really rock your world. And then you've never actually invested the time to learn because you've been maybe told not to ask questions or made to feel like your rating, which you're learning, isn't fast enough. I get it. I understand. Okay. So be real with where you're at today. If you're at zero, you're at zero. At least you know where you're starting at. Number five, number five, how much on a monthly basis do you need to fund your retirement? How much do you need in retirement? So if you get to 65, how much will you need each month to live? The lifestyle that you want or that you desire? How much is it going forward? You probably want to at least start right where you're at, assuming that it's enough. Some of you may not even be making enough to live. So that's the dollar amount again. Monthly, monthly amount. Number six, number six, what's the absolute best rate of return that you know how to get? What's the absolute best rate of return that you personally know how to get? That right there oftentimes is where I really start to educate. That right there oftentimes is a question that most people don't understand. And here's the deal. Money to me is like a foreign language. If you don't understand the language of the land, it makes it hard to get around. Isn't that true? So that's a percentage I'm asking you about. What's the best rate of return that you know how to get? Do you put it underneath the mattress? For zero percent. Negative, really, because of inflation, right? Is it in a savings account? Is it in stocks? Is it in bonds? Is it a CD? Is it a money market account? Is it a mutual fund? Is it okay? So, so to get my mind, my framework as far as those are the type of options that people normally have when we're talking about retirement plan. So, if someone is in a job and they're putting money in a 401k plan, they're doing it because that's what people just say to do. Still don't understand what they're doing. Okay. Because for one K plan, it's just a plan, and then you got funds in it, and then you got to choose which fund based on what your level of risk is, and yada, yada, yada. Okay? Number, so that was six. So now we're at number seven. This is what we're going to calculate. This is what you're going to look at where you're at today and see if you're, see how you're doing. Look at it compared to going to the doctor and just getting a checkup. So here's what you're going to do. Number five, multiply what you have for number five, the monthly amount times 12. The monthly amount times 12. You may want to grab your phones and uh, if you give me some numbers. Somebody, you probably may, you may have the numbers, the same numbers down. Somebody give me a monthly amount. Yes. Okay, 120, all right? 120,000. 5,000, someone probably wrote down? 60,000, right? So forth and so on. Make sense? Just do that really quick. Then once you have that number, you want to divide that by O. Oh, how many of you don't have an answer for number five? Number five, right? Six. No. Number six. There you go, number six. Okay, let's just put 5%. Let's just put 5%. All right, so you got an annual amount of 60,000. Then when you divide 60,000 by 0 .05, 60,000, uh, excuse me, Whatever your annual amount is, divide that by 0 0.05. Whatever your annual amount is, divided by 0 0.05. Okay. Now, now here's the funny part when we do this. You start looking at the number and you start saying, wait a minute, let me redo that. Let me make sure. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? I better get to work. Okay, all right. Somebody give me a number. 2.4 million. Okay, 120,000, right? 10,000 per month, right? 2.4 million. Who else? 3.6 million. All right. Anyone else? Is that number eight or is that still part of number seven? That's it. That's number seven. Seven is about to calculate. Six. Okay. 
Let's just put 5%. Let's just put 5%. We've got an annual amount of 60000 Then when you divide 60000 by 0 0.05, 60000 oh, excuse me, whatever your annual amount is, divide that by 0 0.05. Whatever your annual amount is, divide it by 0 0.05. Okay. Now, here's the funny part when we do this. You start looking at the number and you start saying, wait a minute, let me redo that. <laughs> Is that right? I better get to work. Okay, all right. Somebody give me a number. 2.4 million. Okay, 120,000, right? 10,000 per month, right? 2.4 million. Who else? 3.6 million. All right. Anyone else? That's number seven. Seven is about to calculate. Another number. Another number? 1.2 million. Okay. Was that 60,000 a year? Okay. Now, let me ask this is where I need you guys to participate. Um, young lady, what's your name? Julia. Julia. Hi. Hi. Julia, where are you from? Um, what was your number? Total. Last summer? Yeah. Uh, 2.4 million. Okay. How do you feel about that number? I mean, pretty good now that I'm having this talk with you. <laughs> it's like I'm going to have a plan. Okay. It doesn't intimidate me. I mean, but I didn't, I didn't set my retirement age for quite a while. So you, one more time with that. I didn't set my retirement age for quite a while. I plan to work for quite a while. Okay. Okay. Someone else. What's your name? Lynn. Lynn? Lynn? Yes. Lynn, where are you from? Um, Brunswick, Georgia. Brunswick. Okay, okay. I'm from Georgia, by the way. I'm originally from near Savannah, Georgia. Okay. Um, I saw Shannon Chatham. Hi. What's your name? Tina. Tina. I remember Tina. Hi. Where you live? Fuller. Fuller. Mm -hmm. I'm from Effingham. Mm -hmm. That's my hometown. So, Lynn? Yes. What was your number? Oh, that was good. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. How does that make you feel? Uh, I'm glad I'm in Mary Kay, is what that made me feel like. Okay. Seriously. Okay. Good, why? I just feel like the potential is that's the only, you gotta sell something to have that kind of money in there today, I feel like. Okay, okay, wonderful. Someone else. What's your name? Alma. Alma? Mm -hmm. Hi, Alma. Nate. Thanks, Ian. Okay. Alma, what's your number? 1.2. Okay. How do you feel about that? I feel like I should have gone up. <laughs> okay. I feel like I should have been higher. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me ask you, ladies, what's the significance of asking, how do you feel about that? Because women are afraid of money. It's very emotional. Okay. What else? So you think about where you are. Until you've confronted. Right. What's your name? Anna Vasquez. Anna, where are you from? Orlando. Okay. You remember what I said? My background has nothing to do with you. Remember I said that? If you think about this whole interview process that you guys do, think about what place it comes from. Not what you say. Not when you say, "Oh, I'm caring about the person." Not, not when you. Not what you say. There's a term called cognitive dissonance in, uh, in sociology, which is a disconnect between what you say and what you do. What I'm highlighting is that unless, you said people don't know how much, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You're not demonstrating how much you care when all you're doing is talking to someone about what it is that you do. Does that make sense? You gotta ask a question that actually allows a person to tell you what their state is to determine whether or not they're open and receptive to that which you want to offer. Otherwise, you're trying to convince 97% of the population to do something that they don't want to do. 97% of the population do not want to sell anything. They don't want to be entrepreneurial. 
So if you don't know that, if you're not aware of that, then what happens is you're doing something that is counter to what the natural state is. And no matter what it is that you're doing and saying, you're getting frustrated because you're getting the wrong, the answer isn't what you want to have. And all I want to do is just give you a little shift. Because see, the, at this state right here, what I'm able to do to you is to say, and what's your name? Deborah. Deborah? Yes, sir. Deborah, what was your number? Um, 1,900,000. Okay. Deborah, how do you feel about that? Um, I love it. Okay. So you're on track for that? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Deborah, um, um, why do you love it? Um, I could live on that. I know I could live on that. On the 1.9? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how are we going to, what's the plan that you have currently to get to 1.9? Uh, I don't have a plan. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's right. Deborah and I, and I appreciate that. See, that's what, that's, that's the only way you can grow. When someone's talking about getting a coach, see, see, the coach is all about you. But the coach can only do and help you based on what it is you're willing to reveal. The doctor can only help you when you reveal where the pain is. If you're too proud to, to tell it, what the pain is, then you're not going to grow. So, Deborah, let me ask you, based upon that number and not having a plan, would you be willing to invest less than $1,000 in order to at least have a plan to meet your cash flow need versus having no plan at all and having no shot at all to meet your goal? Is this $1,000 a month or $1,000 one time? One time. Yeah. Um, I probably would. You know, okay. Getting my husband on board would be a totally different issue. No problem, Deborah. Because we're only talking about cheap. Let me you. know your, your husband may pass away some point in time. Yes. Or you may have to I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. You know. 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I love you. 35 years. We're good. Yeah. You see? Yeah. But life, life circumstances. And so many women, right. that's, what you, that's what happens. The woman always says, well, my husband, you got to make a decision. Right. You got to make a decision. And I want to help to educate, equip, and empower you to make an informed decision so that in turn you can bring it to anyone with the right type of mindset. You got to work from here, not from here, when making decisions. The head controls the leadership piece. I don't know how many of you are people of faith, but the bottom line is when we talk about it from the word standpoint, you're talking about the whole armor of God. And the head has to be covered, right? And anointed and all the all the fun. This is your leadership piece. Mm -hmm. This is about leadership right here. That's why chapter one of my book is Leadership is the Answer. Everything moves from there. And you women have the power to control and to change the whole, everything that's going on in the world. You have the power. The reason that you have the power is because, number one, you breathe life, or you good ones do, breathe life into men. That then allow them to go out and kill everything and do whatever you do. <laughs> Slay dragon. Slay dragon, that's right. Cool! <laughs> I just have flashbacks on that. <laughs> but then more importantly, you're the ones that teach the children. You're the ones that have the babies. You're the ones that teach. So that means you have the power to push all the information down. That's why I want to make sure that you guys get it the right way. It's about breathing life and speaking life into you. So now, Deborah, now here's from a thinking standpoint. Now, what she asked me was, is it a thousand dollars a month or one time? My question to you all, and I want you to think about it: to have a sh what would the value of, and what would it be worth to you to have a shot at getting to what you need or what you desire, versus having no shot at all doing what you're doing? Would it be worth twelve thousand dollars? That's $1,000 a month. Would it be worth that? I mean, you really got to think about that because, see, it's not—it's going to impact how you go about doing what you do in your business because you're not speaking in terms of value. You're still talking about expense. You're thinking that something is expensive. How expensive is... What is your freedom worth? If I said that I could... If I said it was going to cost you $100,000 one time to have the opportunity to earn a million, would you pay it? Would you take it? Is that good numbers? Mm -hmm. See, what I like to say, I like to make good money off of bad numbers. You understand? It's always about value. You 
You got events and stuff, and you want to try to get people to it. You tell them all the feel good, you're going to have amazing all this other stuff. And they, you're just repeating information that someone has told you, but you've never tied in anything that's of a value. Mm -hmm. You're seeing it, but you have never been taught how to draw value to it. The value of an event. I just told you that at night, that the week I graduated from West Point in 1996, I got introduced to the world of person. That's that's equivalent to your seminars. Okay, And through that experience, it exposed me to a whole different world that laid the foundation for everything else I've done in my life. That allowed me to go forth to make my first million by 32, but more importantly, to make it over and over and over again regardless in my own state, but then be able to pass that on to generations. You understand? What's the economic value of that? Christ. <laughs> Well, that's essentially what you have the potential of being able to pass on to people in regards to your marriage opportunity. Potentially. See, I don't share this in a way for you to misuse it. I'm not telling you this to use it as a, a silver bullet to try to get people in. That's not it. That. That's my disdain for the network marketing, direct sales, and all the opportunity out there. But I'm an advocate because I'm able to discern and say, okay, here's what's good, but here's what's not so good. And I don't throw the baby out with the bathroom. I don't just make it all, oh, that stuff is not good. So I'm, again, uniquely qualified because most people like me don't sign off on stuff, right? So all, I'm, so all I want to do is, with those seven questions in seven minutes, is give you, to have given you a, a place so that now you can have an anchored belief in what you're doing so that you can continue to do it but to do it with a different vigor. To treat it like a profession. To say, if I stick with this and I do this the right way, if I treat this and I schedule myself, which is where the coaching piece comes in now, which is what I'm doing, say, hey, let's get back into treating it like it's a business. Let's treat it like it's a job. So that in turn, you're working towards that number. But what you guys have going on is you got a pitch, you got a plan at the end, right? That you can shoot for when you get to national. Isn't that true? You see? But see, as you're making that cash flow, you still want to be wise with planting those seeds because that's what I consider it to be. That seed that you can then plant. And for you all that are married, you come at it with your spouse in that manner, and now you're contributing as a hedge against the market. Now you've got a dual plan. He, he, he can work full time on the job while you work full time on the fortune. That's teamwork. Men respond to that. Okay, so I think that's about it for that. I don't know what kind of clock on because I'll start talking. So I will say I'm open to your questions. I encourage you. The book you should look through it, see what it's about. That's not a that's a book that's meant to be a, a guide for you. Where you can sit down if you got a CPA, if you got a financial advisor, if you got an attorney, you can use that to prep yourself to make sure that they're doing right by you. That's the whole intent, is to give you something to equip you so that you're not sitting down and saying you're working with someone and have no clue what they're telling you, thinking that they're experts, not realizing that they're salespeople. That's their job. All of you giving your little piece that may never get you to the number that you need is good for the firm because it's assets under management. That's what's being done. That's the business. Okay? My information that you can...